Look at this chunky junk journal. 31 days and 31 prompts. How do we get here? During the month of December, I set out to journal for 31 days. Uh, I created prompts that were inspired by the holiday season and had themes about gratitude and reflection and all that good stuff that we like to journal about here. It was fun and challenging to honor this commitment that I made to myself and it was awesome to be able to share it with you on this channel. And on one of those videos that I posted, a subscriber asked me, how do I manage to make time to journal daily. And to be honest, I didn't journal every day. I did respond to all 31 prompts, but I didn't journal every day because of time constraints with my job or just days where I just didn't feel like it, it's tired and didn't have any motivation to create. But if I did end up missing a day or two, I made sure that on the day where I had time to journal that I did all of them in one sitting. So what that meant was that I had the luxury to sit in my craft room for hours and hours at a time to get caught up. When I started to consider what advice I would give to others about making time to craft, I realized that I'm kind of in a unique situation where I have the privilege to close my craft door and be locked in here with all of my supplies and materials without any interruption. I don't have children or a family that I have obligations to that would limit the amount of time that I have to create. And in addition to that, I run this channel and now our new Facebook group community. So it's kind of become my job to make sure that I journal with consistency. And on top of that, I have a partner who's willing to do the laundry or go grocery shopping so I can make sure that I'm protecting the time that I have with my journal. So in my case, journaling has become more than just something that I do for myself. It's an obligation now that I have to prioritize. So in sharing that, I'm not saying that in order to be consistent with junk journaling that you need to make a job of it. But what I do think is helpful is prioritizing living a creative life by doing the things that bring you joy. And I believe that that starts with your mindset. I mentioned this before, but it's important to begin any project with a purpose in mind. It's hard to finish or continue something if you don't 
know why you're doing it in the first place. And your motivations don't have to be grand. It could literally just be that I want to journal consistency because it makes me happy. And we like to think that we're special because we have the internet and airplanes and huge skyscrapers, but in reality, we are all just pleasure-seeking animals and we should do more of the things that make us happy. So give into that instinct and if creative journaling is one of those things, just do it. And if your issue is making the time to just do it, then I would like to share some of the advice that I've learned over the years that has helped me prioritize my creativity. So the biggest and most important uh, lesson or skill, I guess, I don't know. The most important thing is that you have to protect your craft time and create boundaries around it and communicate that effectively. And I learned this while I was in grad school. I was expected to draft and revise stories every week, to be reading all the time. And when I wasn't turning in or working on assignments, I was expected to be a curious, observational person in the world and take notes that would then in turn become short stories. And in order for me to do that for three years, I had to be really firm about my schedule. Thankfully, Gary, my partner, is also a writer and artist, so we were able to communicate our needs and boundaries through shorthand. And that would look like me shouting writing time, which meant don't ask for anything for the next two hours. Um, and then in turn for him, if I heard heavy metal playing in the drawing room, that meant that he needed his space to get absorbed in whatever he was working on. And we both knew that if any of us dared to interrupt that very sacred creative time, that they deserved any kind of tongue lashing that would follow, unless it was an emergency, of course. And you may not be in a situation where your family intuitively understands the importance of this time for you. So it's on you to communicate that effectively, loudly, as consistently as possible, that this time is your time and you need it to be happy and whole <laughs> or whatever. And if you think about it, I bet your family doesn't call you every five minutes when you're at work. They should give you as much respect as they give your employer when you're on the clock.
My second bit of advice is to limit your time on social media, which honestly, that is advice for everything. <laughs> I feel like that's the answer to everything. Just be less on social media. And I recognize the irony of me telling you that because you are watching this video on a social media platform. But seriously, it's a time suck. It's designed in a way to keep you out of the real world and working on the things that you actually want to be working on but you know there's also benefits to being on social media like one of my favorite aspects of being a junk journaler is being able to participate in this community i've never been part of a community that is so open to share resources and information and celebrate one another. However, if you find yourself spending more time consuming media instead of outputting your own and telling your own stories, then the whole process is inverted. And I'm guilty of it. I have to remind myself all the time to put down the phone or close my laptop so I can have those quiet times to create. And right now I'm in one of those seasons where I'm trying to limit the amount of screen time I'm doing, which has made me think differently about the ways that I uh, get inspiration for my different projects and there will be more information on that soon. But basically what I'm trying to say is that if you open up your app and you look at your screen time, all of those hours are hours that you could have spent creating art. <laughs> And while we're on the bit about social media, that kind of leads me into my last piece of advice, which is don't make a mountain out of a molehill. I don't need to light an artisanal candle, uh, nor do I need that golden hour light to feel like I have the right atmosphere or ambiance to create. It's easy to get into that mindset that, oh, I don't have the perfectly curated space to get started or, um, everything is not just so, so I can be the best artist that I can be. Um, and definitely social media kind of perpetuates that insecurity, but all we're doing is just gluing little pieces of paper and playing with inks and stamps. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's, it's fun and it's messy and you can create anywhere and don't make your space a thing that stops you from getting started and collaging in your journal. Creative journaling is what you make of it. I asked the lovelies over on the Facebook group what was their favorite part about participating in the December Daily Junk Journal Challenge and most of them said that it was fun to create with a purpose and with consistency. And I encourage everyone to figure out what does consistency mean to you for this year in 2022. I can't believe we're here. Make it a priority and you'd be surprised by what you end up with at the end of the year. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.